Hello everyone! It's been so long since I filmed a video and this is the third time I'm actually filming this because things just keep going wrong. But today I wanted to do my April and May favorites for you guys. I forgot to film a video last month so I'm going to squeeze all those favorites into this video even though it's pretty much been the same because I've been using the same products for the last couple of months. Anyway, I can't believe that it's almost June already. Actually, by the time I edit and upload this, it probably will already be June, so I can't believe that it's June already. I have no idea where the past month has gone. It just went by so fast, and I don't even know what I was doing with myself. I just feel like it was the beginning of May, and now it's the end of May, and I have no idea what happened in between. Although I am a little bit glad that May is over because May seems to be the worst month for me in terms of of allergies. My right eye, which is completely red and bloodshot for the majority of the month, and it just wasn't pretty to look at. That's probably why I haven't been filming a lot of videos because I didn't want you guys staring at my angry eye. So I'll get started with some of my favorites this past couple of months. I have quite a few things to share with you guys, and I feel like I've already mentioned a few of these in past videos. I guess it's because the past couple of months I've just been rediscovering my past loves, like I've been shopping my stash instead of actually going out and shopping. So I will start with some nail polishes. I have been really, really loving the L'Oreal Not A Cloud In Sight. This is from their nail color line. I think they only have one line. But this is just a really pretty turquoise shade and I've been really loving it. These polishes are really beautiful. They apply really nicely, they're really creamy, very opaque, easy to work with, and they last quite a while. This is probably the color that I've reached for the most this past couple of months, just because it's so bright and fun and it just makes me happy looking at the color. The last couple of weeks though, I've moved on to more subdued colors, like more sheer polishes. Just because I was wearing super bright and vibrant and opaque colors for most of April, actually all of April and most of May. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit with a sheer polish. So I've been wearing a combination of these two Essie polishes. One is Ballet Slippers, which is kind of like a really pale ivory shade with a hint of pink to it. And then this is Mademoiselle, which is a really, really fair pink, almost like a pale pink. So I layered these on top of each other. So I did Ballet Slippers first and then I layered Mademoiselle on top of it. And it just has a really nice effect. I'm wearing it right now and it's just, it looks really nice and clean and elegant and very polished. So I've been really loving these two and I've been wearing this polish for the last like week and a half. And I just reapplied the other day, but I think I went four days without it chipping. So I thought that was really great. Moving on to some blushes I've been really loving. The first one is the Revlon Photo Ready Blush in Flushed. This is a cream blush and I, I feel bad kind of mentioning it because I know it was limited edition so for most of you, you won't be able to find it anymore. But it's just a really fun, bright pink shade and I've just been really loving this blush. The more I use this blush, the more I like it. I find that it just sits a lot better on my skin now that my skin is a little bit more normal and it lasts all day and it just has a really beautiful natural finish. It does work really nicely alone, but I've also been layering it with another blush, which I've been really loving, and it's from Burberry. It's the number 5 Blossom, and I've had this for quite a while, but it still actually looks pretty brand new. Um, and I've been using it quite often. So that's what it looks like there. It's basically a coral shade. It's kind of like a pinky peach color. It does have a really nice sheen to it. I wouldn't call it shimmery, but there is a really nice sheen. And it just applies really nicely. Burberry blushes in general, I think, are just so amazing. They're really nice, very pigmented, or pretty pigmented, depending on what color, I guess, you get. And they just apply really smoothly. They feel so silky and buttery, and they're just really, really great blushes. Blushes, and they're definitely some of my favorite ones. The only downside though is they do cost quite a pretty penny. I think it's $54 in Canada the last time I bought one. Next is a MAC blush and it is peaches. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in a video before but it's just a true peach shade. It looks so nice on the cheek. It's a sheer tone so it applies quite lightly but you can build it up if you want more of a color on your cheeks and it just like I said looks so natural on and I've been really really loving this color. The last blush is from Amazon and the name is Tipsy. I feel like I mentioned this blush in every other favorites video, but it's just such a beautiful, bright coral and it's very versatile. You can wear it whenever and it's just so easy to wear and that's why I always reach for it. So like I said, it's a really bright coral. There's a little bit of a sheen to it, um, not too glittery or anything like that. And one of my favorite things about these blushes is how long wearing they are because especially now that it's getting a little bit more humid and hot out, I really want something that will 
lasts all day, especially something that can stand up to the heat. And actually, on a side note, did you know how easy it was to depot these blushes? You actually don't even need to do anything special with them. They actually are made to be able to depot in case you want to put them in like a bigger palette or something like that. The packaging is actually magnetized and all you have to do is apply a little bit of force and the pan will just pop out, which I actually discovered by accident, but it's, I thought it was really cool that they did that. So I'll do a little demo here, so hopefully it works out. So like I said, all you have to do is apply a little bit of force. So basically I do it to the palm of my hand, that way I can catch the pan as it's falling out of the packaging. There we go. So it just pops out really easily. As you can see, there's like a little magnet there. So this pan isn't magnetized to go into a MAC palette though. So if you want to put it in a MAC palette or something like that, you'd have to put an additional magnet on the back of it. But I just thought that was a really cool thing about it. So you can just easily pop it out and put it in a palette and then also put it back into the case. The magnet in here is pretty strong. I mean, if you didn't know that it popped out like that, I'm sure you probably never would have known because the magnet is pretty strong, but I thought that was just a fun little thing. Okay, moving on, I've been really, really loving this Sonia Kashuk blush brush. This is the number 29 brush. I believe it's called the Dome Blusher Brush, but I'm, I'm not sure. But it's the one that I think I showed in the last haul video that I did. It's just a really nice tulip shape. It has a little bit of a pointed end to it, and this has just been my most reached for blush brush in the last couple of months. I've just been really liking it. The hairs on this are really soft, and I especially love the shape of it. This fits really nicely on the cheek, and it really does buff out product really nicely so this has just been my favorite blush brush of the moment. I've also been really loving my YSL Touche Claw. I was really really torn on this. I remember picking it up like a few months ago maybe last year and I ended up returning it because I just really did not like it and for $50 I was like I'm not gonna waste my money and I think the reason that I returned it is because I got the wrong shade. I was matched to the completely wrong shade and it did absolutely nothing for me. So I went back to Sephora a while after that and I decided to try my hand at it again and this time I got the perfect shade for me. I got number three and it just is a really great under eye brightener. Now it doesn't really conceal and it doesn't cover up my under eye circles very well. Um, it just kind of brightens under the eyes so that I look more alive and awake. So I've been really loving this and I haven't used this for a couple of months now but I'm kind of bringing it back out because it's getting a lot more humid and when it gets warmer like during the summer I really like to have as little on my face as possible. So like right now I'm basically wearing the Touche Claw, a little bit of blush and sunscreen and obviously lipstick and mascara but in terms of a base I'm not even really wearing tinted moisturizer. I've also been really enjoying the Hourglass Ambient lighting powder. Now this is something that I've also been on the fence about for the last couple of months. I picked it up during the Sephora Chic Week sales so I got it at a little bit of a discount. I only paid I think like $45 for it, $47, and it's regularly $52 I believe. I got the shade Dim Light and while I do like this and I've been using it every single day since I got it, I wouldn't say that it's life-changing. Um, it's a really nice setting powder. It's The powder itself is really finely milled. It's so smooth and buttery and and it blends like a dream and once you have it on as long as you don't put too much on it's like you don't have anything on your face whatsoever I mean just because of how these are worded in advertising and things like that I think a lot of people will get these expecting something life-changing and expecting like all of their imperfections to be completely blurred if you put a little bit of this on and really it's it's not that life-changing I mean it's a really great setting powder and even though it doesn't have any oil control properties I do find that it does kind of keep my t-zone a little bit mattified throughout the day um, but I mean my blemishes are still there I mean it doesn't hide my under eye circles or my brown spots or hyperpigmentation but it does make a really great finishing powder and it just kind of completes your makeup look so I've been really liking it but I, I wouldn't recommend it to every single person at least go try it out before you buy it um, and then kind of come to your own decision about it but I do like it but not life-changing Okay, moving on to some lip products I've been really loving. The first one is the Nivea Lip Butter. This is in Vanilla and Macadamia. 
I got this a couple of months ago and this is actually my second one of these because I lost my first one but it was almost I think it was halfway through but I lost it so I had to pick up a new one and this is amazing it's so smooth and very lightweight on the lips and I just like applying this before I apply any kind of lip product on my lips and I find the the lip product just applies a lot smoother and this smells amazing which I'm sure you guys all know because I'm so late on the bandwagon on this other lip products I've been really loving I have two from Mac and one from Giorgio Armani this is the Rouge d'Armani sheer I've mentioned this before in many videos I'm sure but this is the number 301 it's a really beautiful coral shade it's a very sheer it is super super moisturizing and I find that if I have this on me I don't even have to worry about carrying an additional lip balm with me because this is so moisturizing that um, it's really all you need to carry with you. The other two lipsticks, like I said, are from MAC. The first one is Riri Roo, which was part of the limited edition MAC Loves Riri or Riri Loves MAC collection, which I think is such a, like, state the obvious kind of name. I don't know. I thought they would come up with something a little bit more creative. It's basically a blue-based red, and I am such a huge fan of red lipsticks. I'm sure you guys probably don't know that about me because I rarely wear red lipstick when I'm filming this video, but just in the last few months, especially during the winter season, I wore red lipstick like pretty much every single day, um, and this is a really, really nice red. I will say it's a little bit drying on the lips, so um, it's definitely not for everyone, but it is manageable as long as you prep your lips properly. Um, it lasts all day long, even through eating. It's such an amazing color. And I'm only mentioning this because they're going to be relaunching the Riri collection in June. So yeah, if you do like this color and you want to go pick it up, you will be able to get it when it re-releases. If not, you can always just get Ruby Woo because the this and Ruby Woo are very, very similar. This is just a tad bit darker, like slightly. It's very, very undiscernible to the eye. And then the other lipstick I've been really loving is Crosswires which is, I believe this is a cream sheen, and it's just a really pretty pinky coral shade. has a little bit of a sheen to it, but not anything overwhelming. It's what I'm wearing today, actually. I am wearing this and a little bit of the Rouge d'Armani sheer on top of it. I think this is just a really fun, bright coral lip, and it's perfect for spring and summer, and it wears fairly nicely. I mean... It doesn't last all day. I find I have to reapply if I have something to drink or something to eat, but it's a really beautiful color and I'd highly recommend it. Okay, and we have a few more things to share with you guys, and the next two are for acne breakouts. So I actually experienced a little bit of a breakout recently here on my forehead. Um, I still have a little bit of the remnants, just my skin's just trying to heal from the breakouts, but I've been really loving these two. The first one is the Mario Badescu Drying Cream, which if you've seen uh, even a handful of my videos, you probably know I am absolutely obsessed with. It is basically like a paste that you put on top of your blemishes and it just helps dry them out without drying your skin out. I find this works especially well for blemishes that are under the skin because it really helps kind of dry them out before they pierce the skin surface. The other thing I've been really loving is the tea tree oil from the Body Shop. So this is a more concentrated version of tea tree oil because you can find tea tree oil in a lot of different things um, but this is a little bit more concentrated and it comes in a little tube like this or a little jar like this so basically what I do with this is I'll take a little drop of it just on my fingertip after I've washed my face and just apply it to my any problem areas that I have I find this works best on breakouts that have pierced the surface of your skin. So it says that this contains 15% tea tree oil. I'm not sure what the average percentage that other concentrated versions carry, um, but this contains 15%. And it works really well for me, and I've been really loving it. Okay, so those were my favorites for April and May. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please leave a comment below if you have any other video requests that you'd like me to do. I have quite a few reviews that I have have to get on because I've completely put those on the back burner. So I'm going to try to get some reviews done because these were requested quite a while ago. Okay, so I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I hope the weather is amazing where you are and I will see you guys next time. Bye!